Hello, my sweet pearls. Welcome to my annual Met Gala review. And today, it's May 2nd. It's in the morning, so the Met Gala just happened last night. And I did watch the whole live stream like someone who has no life. Um, with that said, though, I do want to address the controversy of this year's theme, which is Karl Lagerfeld. And if you don't know who Karl Lagerfeld is, he's this very contentious designer. He died in 2019, but he had a long career working at Chanel. He's also worked at Chloe, at Balmain for a little bit, at Fendi, and he also had his own eponymous label. But the thing with Carl is, despite his prolific career, a lot of people do not like him and do not feel that he deserved this memorial tribute because of past comments that he's made. He's been extremely fat phobic. He's also victim blamed at the onset of Me Too. And he's also made like Islamophobic remarks, I believe. So there's just a long list of transgressions with Carl. I think he's also made homophobic comments despite being gay himself. So yeah, Carl has said a lot of very disturbing, very wrong things. And because of that, a lot of people don't feel this was a necessary tribute. Unfortunately, I think with Carl, he was extremely well connected and well respected by a lot of people who are in charge of fashion these days. Like he was a personal friend of Anna Wintour. And, you know, Rachel Tashian actually wrote a really good article for the Washington Post that she published yesterday morning. And I'll link it in the description because I think it's worth the read. But she kind of goes through Carl's transgressions, but also unpack the idea that Anna Winter tends to support a lot of people like Carl. So Anna Winter has also supported John Galliano, even though John Galliano was literally fired from Dior for making anti-Semitic comments. So yeah, it's just like a big political ordeal. I do just want to address that before we get started because I think even though I like to keep it light, I like to keep it fun for these Met Gala reviews, I also think it's important to recognize like the circumstances and the context for what is happening. Okay, now let's just get started on the looks because there's quite a lot. I was watching this live stream yesterday with my best friend, one of my best friends who lives in Australia. I mean, we're on FaceTime and just watching the Vogue live stream and looking at all the photos that were getting released onto Twitter. And it was just really fun because usually it's a very solitary activity for me to watch the live stream. Also, she's so funny because at the beginning of the night, all these people came and I don't know if I'm like also just not super, super, super plugged in with the industry, but there were so many people where I was just like, I don't know who any of these people are. And my friend, her name was Ella. She was just like, I feel like they just make up new famous people every year. And I think that's so real. One of my favorite looks of the night, starting off super strong with Ashley Graham. I think actually this might have been my favorite look of the entire night. It's just a beautiful dress. It was designed by Harris Reed, who is this British fashion designer. Ashley also said on her Instagram that Harris took inspiration from this Chanel couture dress from the fall winter 1987 collection. And I think what Ashley wore, like this dress is just as good as the original. I think that the mermaid tail, the very dramatic mermaid tail is perfect. The pannier inspired hips. I mean, that was a borrowed detail, but I really like that because it balanced the sleeves that come out of this sort of overflowing bodice. I like the incorporation of a black velvet with the pink satin. It adds way more dimension than what the original look had. The original look, once again, it's a very beautiful dress, but I think this dress that Harris redesigned is more elevated and perfect for an event like the Met Gala. Also, Ashley Graham just looks really good in it. It's obviously custom tailored for her, so you know, no surprise there. Actually, another look that was reinterpreted that I didn't like, so maybe not all, not hashtag not all dresses. A look I didn't love was Olivia Wilde's look, and she was wearing a dress that was designed by Chloe's current designer, Gabriella Hurst, and it's based on this 1983 design that Lagerfeld made when he was um, head of Chloe. So in the original Chloe design, it's a sculptural cap-sleeved black silhouette, and Gabriella Hurst reinterpreted it and made it white and also longer because the dress was a midi length dress before. And I think that's good to make it longer because you want to make it more formal. I think, I forget that one girl's name, Margaret something. Um, 
but she wore a pretty short dress for the red carpet or the beige carpet. Oh my God, don't even get me started on the whole carpet scenario. I don't know why all these event people keep picking beige carpets, especially when they should have had the foresight to know lots of people are going to wear black and white. And the reason lots of people are going to wear black and white is because Carl famously would always wear like his black and white suits and his fingerless gloves or whatever. So I think that's one, very Carl. Also, Chanel in general has a lot of black and white color symbolism because starting from the very top, Coco Chanel was rebelling against the very Baroque style that women were expected to wear when she was first um, coming up. And she wanted to challenge that by going more minimal. And she also went more minimal with jewelry too. So a lot of jewelry that Chanel designed was either like diamond, pearl, silver, gold tones. There weren't many colorful jewels. She did make some colorful jewelry later, but generally with neutrals. And so if you know Karl Lagerfeld's going to be the theme and you know that one, he wears black and white a lot. And two, he, most people are probably going to do Chanel. You should have the foresight to know most people are going to wear black and white on this carpet, which is not going to look nice against a beige backdrop. Also, okay, I'm going to take off these glasses because I feel it's blocking our connection. <laughs> so I feel like the choice to wear all white really washed Olivia out. And also, I mean, this is going to be a hot take. I didn't really love the original design that Carl did anyway. Like, it's supposed to be a violin because the 1983 collection was the theme of music. But when I was looking at it, I thought it looked like a peanut because I guess I'm just not <laughs> literate enough to know where this dress was coming from. I feel like it was serving Mr. Peanut becomes... Pope of the Catholic Church. Margaret Chang also controvers controversially wore basically the same dress. She wore this a dress that was inspired by the same dress. So it did have that like peanut at the, the violin on the front. And that was pretty crazy because she didn't walk with the rest of the Gabriella Hurst team. So it seems like she just independently had this idea. Usually when a couple people have a similar look, it's because they're going with the same designer who is designing all these things and therefore making their team look cohesive. And I actually think Margaret Jang's look was better because it was all black. It was also a little bit more dramatic. Like it had the cape in the back that went down and had a train. And I also liked the silhouette more of the bottom of the skirt. I think with the violin, it was very vertical. And Olivia Wilde's look, it was very like column-like and vertical compared to Margaret's look, which had the very vertical detail, but then it had this like sort of outwardly wide overflowing shape, which gave it more balance. That's just a personal preference. Okay, another dress that I really, really liked was Michaela Cole's Scaparelli dress. And it consisted of 130,000 crystals, 26,000 mixed stones, and 3,800 hours of work. I really loved it. And I also didn't even notice that the dress was sheer at first. And for me, I have a bone to pick with sheer because I think at the moment sheer is really trendy. And so a lot of people have done sheer improperly. Also, one of the pitfalls with wearing sheer is that it can look very tacky and very cheap. But obviously, this was studded in stones. And so it looked very <laughs> chic. It looked very expensive. Yeah, I was a fan. I kind of like Sydney Sweeney's look. And I think that's because Sydney Sweeney has notoriously gotten the worst styling for so many red carpets. I thought she looked lovely in this dress. It's um, Mew Mew. I usually don't love a nude dress moment, especially on a beige carpet, because I think on photos, it doesn't necessarily capture as well as it does in real life. Photos tend to wash people out. And that's what I thought happened with Gwendolyn Christie and Nicole Kidman. So Nicole Kidman was wearing a Chanel dress that she wore in her um, Chanel number no. five ad campaign that she did in 2004. It was like this fashion film she made with Karl Lagerfeld. I thought that was a very beautiful thing to recall back to. I think the photos were not doing it justice because this carpet was not doing it justice. It just kind of melded in with her skin and it wasn't super flattering in that sense. But for Sydney Sweeney, I wasn't bothered because I think the stones that were glued to the dress gave it more texture, which gave the dress overall more dimension so it didn't just blend into her skin. 
One thing that I didn't love is her hair. I feel like they just didn't really style her hair. Like it was like the last thing before she ran out the door. Maybe she ran out of time. I don't know. I think it would have been a really elevated look if they did a more 1940s-esque hairstyle for her. Something like maybe like Veronica Lake or Rita Hayworth. But the way that her hair is, it kind of just looks a little unbrushed, a little messy. Okay, Giselle. I wasn't a huge, huge fan of this look. And I know I'm in the minority because so many people were like, oh my god, Giselle, this is, she looks amazing. This is her divorce look. This is her revenge dress or whatever. I think it looks nice. She's worn this dress before in a 2007, 2008 editorial. The dress is from a 2007 Chanel Couture collection. When I looked at the photos on the runway, I kind of wish she had put the hood of the cape on her head because I think it makes the dress a little bit more interesting. It makes the look a little bit more interesting. For me, it's just sort of a nice dress. I don't really have any comments. I don't think it particularly stood out to me. A couple other looks that I thought needed headwear or could have been styled differently at the top. Eileen Gu, who is wearing Robert Wan Couture. She's wearing this wine stain dress. So if you look closely at the details, it looks like wine was like splattered all over the dress. It's a very fun dress. But uh, the original look came with a hat, which I think would have tied the look way more together because from the neck down, it's super formal because it's a couture dress. But from the neck up, she's just wearing this more casual ponytail. And one of my friends on Twitter said it looked like a post-workout ponytail. So there was a bit of a discrepancy there. A lot of the times with looks that come with a matching hat, I can tell there should have been a hat there. Same thing with Dua Lipa. Her dress is a bridal look and Karl Lagerfeld was known for making these Chanel bridal looks and only his muses would wear them, and so it was kind of a big deal. So I do like that she picked a bridal look, but it was missing the little top hat that Claudia Schiffer wore originally with it back in 1992. And again, Dua Lipa's hair kind of just like flat in comparison to the rest of the look. Kristen Stewart, also hatless. I actually really love Kristen Stewart's look though because she's been in a Chanel contract for a really long time. I don't know if she's still in it. I think she's still in it. But I feel like they've always dressed her in a way that is not serving her. But this look, I think, really matches her energy. It's a suit from the 2016 collection. I like that she looks a little off-duty with it. Like, she's wearing minimal makeup. Her hair is kind of tousled. But purposely. It doesn't look messy. It looks purposely messy, which is a different thing. But, yeah, I would have liked it more with the hat. (laughs) I thought Doja Cat's look was so fire. She is wearing an homage to Choupette, who is Carl Lagerfeld's cat. And Choupette is still alive. Choupette has outlived her dad. And also Choupette wasn't even Carl's cat from the beginning. Carl was cat sitting Choupette for a friend. And then he became so attached to the cat that his friend just ended up giving him Choupette, which I think is just very strange. As someone who owns a cat, I would never give my cat to a cat sitter, but... I digress. It was only a matter of time before someone came in a full Choupette getup. And I honestly also had a, an inkling that it was going to be Doja Cat because she's been doing a lot of very experimental, very avant-garde looks on red carpets that I think is very much needed where it's like, I'm going to do something that's show-stopping and that's going to bring attention and that's going to start a conversation. I'm never going to play it safe. And I really love that for her. And I also love that she chose Choupette because her name is literally Doja Cat. So... The actual dress that she's wearing is Oscar de la Renta and she's wearing prosthetic, a prosthetic nose piece and claws and she also meowed at the interview. What was your inspiration for tonight? Be honest with me and go into detail. Wow. 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 Compare this with Jared Leto who pulled in in like a mascot uniform that was supposed to represent Choupette. I thought that was like really inspired and I thought that was kind of stupid. I think for him, it was like a joke. It was like, because he had an outfit, he didn't stay in that cat suit the whole time. Whereas I think with Doja, she really elevated the idea and she really made it her own and she brought fashion to it. Anne Hathaway also had a beautiful look. She, I'm living for the Anne Hathaway renaissance, honestly, because Anne Hathasons, because I feel like in the 2010s, everyone just didn't like her for no reason. So I really love this come up for her. And I love that she's being re 
framed as a fashion icon because the looks that she's been turning out lately in the past year have been so good. She's wearing Donatella Versace. According to an interview Donatella did, she said, for Anne, I wanted to create a gown to celebrate a conversation between Carl and Versace. I remember listening to Gianni and Carl talking and laughing over dinner one evening, and the stress reminds me of that moment. Carl celebrated women in craftsmanship. I learned so much from his work. The dress is a tribute to our shared 90s experience. Tweed, pearls, and camellias mixed with safety pins, slashes, and a corset. It has a lot of elements that Carl used while working at Chanel. So a lot of these elements are also just Chanel elements. Tweed, for instance, Coco Chanel combined a lot of menswear into her women's wear designs because once again, I said she was rebelling against this Baroque fashion institution, but also she liked menswear. She thought it was way more comfortable. Tweed at the time was mostly used for men's clothing and she brought it to women's wear because she wore the tweed. She thought it was a very comfortable, very supple fabric. And then beginning in 1924, she enlisted a Scottish factory to produce her tweed fabrics for all of her clothes. And then the pearls, the pearl adorned safety pins. Pearls are also a big motif with Chanel, which I don't think is very surprising because a lot of people wore pearls last night. According to the author Emma Baxter Wright, uh, she describes Chanel's feelings towards pearls like this. The luminosity of pearls captured the light she felt and gave a flattering glow to the skin and eyes. Like much that she did to democratize fashion, jewelry was not to be saved for impressive occasions. The bodice of Anne Hathaway's dress the cups are shaped like camellia flowers, which is the signature flower of Chanel. The story goes that when Coco was around 13, she saw Sarah Bernhardt's performance in The Lady of the Camellias and was deeply moved by it. Uh, the first time we find camellia in Chanel's designs was in 1913, and they've since been a mainstay of the brand. So I think what Anne Hathaway is wearing is amazing. It's very on theme. And yeah, love it. Love that for her. Another person who really leaned on the pearls was Kim Kardashian. She's wearing Scaparelli. This is a custom dress. It's made of 50,000 real pearls. And it also bore a striking resemblance to her 2007 Playboy shoot where she posed nude but covered in pearls. There's something that bothers me about it. And I think it's like the shapewear corset. It just looks kind of cheap. And I understand maybe it's because Kim has been making a lot of moves with her shapewear basics brand skims and maybe she wanted to like subtly promote that i don't know i think if it was like silk or a velvet or a more luxurious fabric it could have worked but it's just you know it, it looks like it's uh spanx it's like that kind of material cara is wearing something clearly carl lagerfeld related she's wearing sunglasses her hair is like this like bleached gray tone but the outfit is very strange because she's wearing this white shirt dress um, that has a floor length cape, very dramatic, but she's also wearing patent leather leg warmers and sandals. And I think the thing that bothers me is I don't really like ensembles where you can't tell what weather this person would wear this look in. Like it doesn't make sense for any weather because I feel like with leather leg warmers, you associate that with fall, winter. Those are very insulating. But then she's wearing it with open toe sandals. Also, the shirt dress, it looked like it was probably made of a cotton or something very light. It looked kind of summery. And it also had a mini skirt and a plunging neckline. But then she was also wearing moto gloves that, you know, you don't really wear gloves in the spring, summertime. I think my brain was kind of like, I don't compute what this ensemble is. It looks kind of messy for that reason. And I didn't like it. Cardi B. So when she pulls up in this Miss Sohi pink gown, I was like, okay, what's going on? The thing is like, she's worn something similar. In 2021, she wore a Mugler dress that was feathered. It was red and it had that sculptural backing that when I saw this, I was kind of like just thinking about that. And I was like, okay, like, you know, I've kind of seen this before. It's not, it's very Cardi. It's not really like that interesting. You know, she had me in the first half and I should have trusted her the whole time because the dress that she pulled up in on the beige carpet was so fun. It was this black and white uh, Chen Pang dress that had this corset bodice and the skirt. It was made of a quilted fabric, which I think is representing like the quilted Chanel bags. 
but also there were these camellia designs on it. There were pearls on the bodice. The top part of her top, it was like a shirted collar with a tie. So very Carl. I thought this was a very strong look. Once again, suits are symbolized as being more masculine, right? But the hoop skirt of this dress is very feminine. I feel like hoop skirts are very, very feminine coded. And so it was this nice blend between the masculine and the feminine that I think once again is really significant in upholding the legacy of Chanel. You know, I have to say something that I was surprised with too was there weren't a lot of sexy outfits. And Usually when I think of a lot of Carl's work, I think it's very sexy. He's designed a lot of ensembles that are just like cat suits and underwear, literal underwear briefs over tights. And the only person that I saw really lean into that was Kendall Jenner. But I didn't love Kendall Jenner's outfit because I feel like it was kind of giving party city. I don't know. There was just something about it that looked a little cheap and that looked a little bit like a Coachella outfit. And also... Everyone was comparing her to that Kris Jenner meme. So that was like another <laughs> just funny thing that added to the unseriousness of Kendall's outfit. Florence Pugh wore Valentino. Honestly, this dress is really nice. I really love it. It's this white ball gown that has a plunging neckline and there's a little bow detail at the front and it has a long train. It's very, very elegant. And I don't know why, but she was wearing this feathered headpiece with it that made no sense with the rest of the outfit. You know, I was complaining about how some outfits look like they need a hat. This outfit did not look like it needed any kind of headwear. The last look of the night I want to talk about was also the last person who showed up. <laughs> Rihanna. She was wearing a custom Valentino haute couture silk dress featuring a cape that was covered in 30 giant carmelia appliques and i love it i think it obviously is an homage to a lot of carl's bridal looks and i think what's also fun is she debuted a pregnancy bump and so congrats to rihanna but also i just think that it's like such a cheeky fun thing to do to wear like a white wedding gown and then also show that you're pregnant <laughs> because you know like the whole white bridal look came about because like white is the color of virgins and you know back in the day it was way more common for you to get married as a virgin so I think that's just like a funny thing that she did and I love that you know ASAP Rocky he was dressed up he was wearing this like kilt he was very Carl Lagerfeld coated and also Carl does like Scottish tartan. He looked fine, but I also liked that he knew Rihanna was a star and he, you know, made space for her to get photographed by herself because he knew we were all waiting for her and not him. You know, that's that's what you need in a man. <laughs> Someone who knows not to take up too much space. Overall, I think that the looks were, I want to say a little boring, a little tepid. And I think that's the problem with the theme in general. It's too easy to just do Chanel and that's why a lot of people ended up doing very similar types of outfits whereas it would have been fun to see like some more Fendi references it would have been fun to see more specific looks that were copied like what Ashley Graham did and even what um Olivia Wilde was wearing that's more fun I also think because the color palette you know most people did black and white and so it was like a bit of a bit of a bore visually watching it, especially on this beige carpet. I honestly was losing steam about two hours in on the live stream. I would have liked a different theme general, and I really hope that next year they do Vivian Westwood, although a lot of designers have passed away, unfortunately, this year. So I don't know who they're going to choose for next year's theme or if they're going to just make one big memorial theme or if they're just not going to do a designer theme. But I think it would be really cool to do Vivian Westwood personally. So, yeah. Okay, great. Let me know in the comments what your favorite Met Gala look was, what your least favorite Met Gala look was. If I didn't mention something, yeah. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day. And I'll see you next time. Bye.